This what if is on what if Naruto was the prodigy of the legendary Phoenix family, the rise of a hero after a self-imposed exile part 1. Disclaimer, I don't own Naruto nor this fanfic. Kua Academy was one of the most famous schools of Japan, and is considered as the costliest school in the world. Therefore this school was only attended by richest of individuals and it was also a supernatural school which housed devils from very prestigious families like the Gregory and the Saitri families. In fact, these families were responsible for the founding of Kua Academy. At present, a red-haired devil was thinking deeply and was worried to some extent because of a recent call which she got from her brother and by the tone of his voice the problem was pretty serious but she didn't know what the problem was exactly. She was just informed that she needed to keep her evening free for a meeting with her brother. A.K. no Himajima was the queen of Rai as Gregory and she was her dear friend since childhood and she had never seen her king with such a deep expression. She knew that Rai as got a call from her brother and she also knew that he was visiting later in the evening but what she didn't understand was the reason for so much anxiety in the club. New members of the peerage like Sai and Asia were freaking out because of the forlorn expression on their king's face. Is everything fine Luku? Questioned Akano since now even she was worried for Raya's health. Other members of the peerage were listening closely to the conversation between their Buku and Queen. Even Konko took a break from eating her sweets. I am just worried about the meeting with my brother, it seems pretty serious and he didn't give me any details replied Rias with the same worried expression. I am sure it won't be that bad. Right? Asked a clueless Sai. I am not so sure Sai, Buku's brother is the Lucifer of Underworld and the strongest among the four kings of Underworld. If he is asking for a meeting it must be quite serious. Answered Yoto Kiba, the knight of Rias' peerage. After hearing this both Sai and Asia gulped and were freaking out about the impending meeting with the Lucifer of Underworld. Sai was even more afraid because he didn't even knew that Buku's brother was the king of Underworld but he didn't dare to voice his concerns since the atmosphere was quite thick. Before anyone could ponder more on the subject, a bright light invaded the room of a culture search club and a symbol of Gregory family appeared on the floor. Riaz knew immediately that her brother had arrived for the scheduled meeting and just like that her brother and his queen, wife stood before her peerage. Sai seemed shocked to see a man who looked like a man version of Rias which meant no large tits, so he was disappointed but after looking at the other woman he was rejuvenated since she had very large boobs and she was incredibly beautiful with her silver hair and silver eyes. She was wearing a French made outfit and her hair was made in a twin braid style. You are early, Nisama. Say to dry as. So what is so important that you would visit the human world? It's unlike you all, Ryastan are you not happy to see your aunt Sama? Replied Serge Slucifer childishly. Ryaz now sported massive tick marks on her head, clearly she was annoyed by her brother's behavior, but before she could take any actions against her brother, Greyfire had already started to pull her brother's cheeks. Why can't you act according to your stature? Is it really that hard for you to act maturely? chastised Greyfile with a scolding tone. Sai and Asia were quite shocked to watch someone like the Crimson Satan acting so childishly and then getting scolded by his maid. They would have laughed if Buka didn't have such a forlorn expression. After getting hit by Greyfile, Serge just finally decided to mention his concerns. To tell the truth even I don't know what the problem is, but the Phoenix family asked us to meet immediately here in Kua Academy. They seemed very concerned, we believe that it has something to do with your engagement but only they can confirm our assumptions. After hearing this Sai looked scandalized, for him it seemed as if his world came crashing down. Rai as herself was barely controlling herself from lashing out at her brother. By gods. She hated her soon to be fiancé tilde copyright, he was the lowest of scum. She would rather die than marry someone like Rai's or Phoenix. Akano herself was quite angry with how things turned out with Buku and Phoenix family. Even Kiba and Konko seemed quite concerned for their king. What? Buku is engaged. When did this happen? Before Sai could go on with his rant another bright light invaded the halls of the Occultra Search Club. This time the Phoenix symbol appeared on the club room's floor. 
Conco whispered Phoenix family. Every member of Raya Spirit were on high alert after they recognized that it was the symbol of Phoenix family of devils. They expected to be greeted by the notorious playboy of Underworld aka Riser Phoenix but they were surprised to be welcomed by a man and a woman who seemed to be in their late 20s or early 30s. The male had blonde hair and dark blue eyes. He had a height of around 6 feet and had a decent build and donned a very noble aura. The female was around 5 feet 7 in and had a wavy blonde hair with two ponies which had a drill-like curled shape. The front of her hair has several bangs hanging over her forehead, with a V-shaped fringe hanging over the bridge of her nose. A Kanoa and Rai as easily recognized the individuals as the Lord and Lady Phoenix of the Phoenix Group of Devils. Lord Phoenix was the clan head of the above-mentioned group of devils and was one of the most influential devil in the underworld. Rest of the members took some time to remember the newly arrived devils whereas Sai and Asia had no clue whatsoever and were unable to recognize these distinguished individuals. Lord and Lady Phoenix Sama, it's an honor to meet you here. I just wish that it could have been under better circumstances. Rai as said with a noble and a monotonous voice. It's a pleasure to meet you to Rai as sin and there is no such need of formalities between us. Reply Lord Phoenix with a little hearty voice. Same here. Concluded Lady Phoenix. Riaz gave a small smile and asked what's the matter Phoenix Sama? Why have you called for a meeting in Kua Academy of all places? Now all the attention was diverted to the Phoenix household members. Even Sir Sis and Sai were listening carefully to what they had to say. Lord and Lady Phoenix showed a very melancholy expression. None of the devils who were standing there missed their heartbroken feelings. Even Riaz was now afraid of the situation even though all the training she went through to always keep her calm in dire situations. Keeping calm was a necessary attribute to become a successful king and to win a lot of rating games. After a minute of total silence Lord Phoenix finally lifted the thick atmosphere by sharing his concerns. Before I speak of my issue. I want a promise from all of the devils here that they won't speak of this issue with anyone else. I want a commitment from everyone here on their honor. We assure you that whatever you speak of will not leave these four walls Lord Phoenix San," replied Sir Sis with sincerity in his tone. All the members of Raya Spirit nodded their heads to show that they will keep their promise. After watching everybody take an oath Lord Phoenix continued with his concerns. What I want everybody to know here is that Riser Phoenix is not my youngest son. With that he dropped the bomb. What? Serge screamed and he was also donning an unnaturally serious face. Before Serge can continue with his rant, Grayfire started to pull his cheeks rather painfully. Serge San, keep your cool and let Phoenix Sama finish his concerns. Serge started whining rather pitifully whereas everybody from Raya's peerage sweat dropped because of the so-called Crimson Satan's behavior. Lord Phoenix coughed a little to get everybody's attention back as I was saying, Riser Phoenix is not my youngest son, 13 years ago we adopted a little boy named Naruto. He was only 3 years old at that time but when he turned 6 he just disappeared. By this time Lady Phoenix was openly sporting tears. Clearly she was worried for her son. After watching his wife in that state Lord Phoenix couldn't control himself and went to provide some support for his wife. He just gave us a letter describing that he had something important to do, that he wanted to get strong and then he disappeared with his evil pieces, just like that. We spent a lot of resources trying to find him but it was as if he disappeared from the three worlds itself. We had every reason to believe that he was killed by someone on his travel. Continued Lady Phoenix. Sergius and Grayfire now had a little idea of their problem. Now they understood their pain a little cause there was no way they could understand fully the pain of losing a son. Everybody donned very sad faces. Even Riaz felt sorry for them even though they were the one responsible for her impending engagement with that scum of a devil aka Riser. Phoenix but they were not the only one to blame for this her parents were equally responsible for this mess. Underscore but after 10 years we finally got an info from a reliable source that he was alive and well. Lady Phoenix finally showed some relief on her face. Riot was glad for the Phoenix family but what she didn't understand was how she was related to this giant mess. 
I am glad for you Lady Phoenix Sama but how am I related to all this? Before Lady Phoenix could answer Raya's, Serge just interjected her I believe I can answer that Lady Phoenix San, to put it simply Raya's, the contract between the Phoenix and Greenery. Family clearly stated that you would be married to the youngest son of the Phoenix household, but since Riser is no longer the youngest son in the Phoenix household, you can't be married to him. Riot was stunned after hearing her brother say that, in fact everyone in the peerage was stunned. Akano and Konko were glad that their best friend slash Buku wouldn't have to marry a scum like Riser. The red-haired buxom devil was so happy that she was congratulating herself and was literally dancing in her mind. However after some time the reality of the situation hit her. Hard, to tell the truth nothing had changed for her. Now she was being married off to some other guy who she didn't even knew and then there was also a possibility that he was even a greater scum than Riser. Although for now she was out of the harm's way that is why she decided to not voice her concerns at least for now. So let me guess you want us to get him back from whatever hole your son is hiding. Retorted Sai with a condescending tone. To put it simply, yes. Said Lord Phoenix. So do you have photograph of your son? Asked Grey maintaining her manners unlike someone. Yes, we do have one but it's an old one when he was six years old. With that Lady Phoenix gave a small photo to Grey Faya. Everybody looked at that photo and they saw a healthy kid with spiky blonde hair, he had bright blue eyes. He was wearing a black shirt and white short and was giving a peace sign with his fingers. Everybody had a single thought that this Naruto kid was incredibly cute when he was a kid. Finally after Raya's observed that photo for some time she said with a smile even though he is adopted he looks like a phoenix. To this both the parents gave a genuine smile and gave a small nod. So where is he? Pressed Serge. he was getting impatient. He really wanted to meet this kid. Well we believe that he is in Vatican City. With that Lord Phoenix dropped another bomb. Everybody had single thought. You got to be shitting me. Vatican City, is the smallest country in the world with only an area of 44 hectares and with a population of meager 842. This holy city is ruled by the Bishop of Rome, who is also known as the Pope to the public and the believers in Biblical God. All this is common knowledge and anybody can find it on the internet, but what everybody doesn't know is that it is the main base for the holy or celestial beings, commonly known as angels, so it is right to say that any devil or fallen angel who steps in these holy grounds are as good as dead. However all these threats on life didn't matter to someone who had seen far worse in his life, and has survived and flourished in even harsher environments. These kind of people were very less in the three factions and Naruto Phoenix was one amongst them. In fact he was the best amongst them. At present Naruto was deep underground in the Sistine Chapel, these were one of the many bases from where he operated and provided safe haven to his peerage. Since who would think that they would find their enemies in their home turf right below their nose? Anyways it would be unbelievable that someone had a secret base right under the Pope's residence which is the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican City. Naruto was only wearing an Anbu black pant with armed guards and was destroying dummies with his Taijutsu Kittas and was not using any shakar to power his punches and kicks. If anyone would have seen him then they would have seen his hands blur when he punched each dummies with such precision that even an archer might feel jealous. He defined the definition calm when he did his daily workout but today he was anything but calm. Memories of his past still haunted him. You are my living legacy. Naruto used Shakura this time and he moved so fast that he was a blur and all the dummies broke apart behind him. He was finally done with his Taijutsu training but then he donned a very somber face instead of being happy for achieving his goal. He could still remember his brother's sacrifice, his last words. You are my living legacy. Flashback Madara and Kaguya were finally defeated after a battle which lasted three days but this battle which he was fighting right now was the toughest one, because now at this moment he was fighting his brother in everything but blood. He knew that it was their destiny to fight to death since they were the descendants of Hagoromo's two sons, Indra and Ashura. 
they were supposed to fight each other to death just like Hashi Ramasinju and Dukai Madara. Today on the day of his birthday, Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Kai were also going to fight each other till only one man was standing. He wanted to change this destiny so much, but Naruto knew that this fight was unavoidable. He was no longer the same Na A Tilda Macron V boy who thought that he could end the war all alone and that he would be able to change everybody's mind. Sasuke was now beyond any kind of help, he had captured all the nine Baijus by using Chibaka Tensai, planetary devastation and had enslaved them in massive moon-like rocks. He now knew better than anyone that there was no reformation for his brother and that it was his responsibility to see to it that the Baijus got their freedom and that the elemental nations achieved peace which was based on love and understanding instead of force and hate. We are finally at the Valley of End, where we fought last time and I was the victor," stated Sasuke without demonstrating any kind of emotions. We don't have to do this Sasuke, we can talk this out. Naruto insisted with clear desperation in his being but even he knew that they were way past talking. There is nothing to talk about, we will settle it with our fists. Naruto gritted his teeth then have it your way. With that they charged at each other to settle things for once and for all. Flashback end. Naruto was now doing Salmon's Ladder in his bash this was the last part of his today's workout, and was one of the toughest exercise in the world for humans, but he wasn't. Thinking about his training or all the sweat which was present in his body due to his intense workout, the only thing which he could think about was his 13-year-old battle with Sasuke and its dire consequences. You are my living legacy. Naruto was now gritting his teeth and he fell down from the rod and gave an animalistic growl, scream to the heavens. Why Sasuke? Why Ie? These were the only thoughts which disturbed his mind right now. Flashback. They have been fighting each other since last six hours and they were at their end of the duel. Both Naruto and Sasuke had used everything in their repertoire including full body. Suzu, tempestuous god of valor and nine tail cue by mode but they were equal in all terms. Why wouldn't you just go down Naruto? Screamed Sasuke with desperation and anger visible as day in his voice. Sasuke was in a terrible state, his white shirt was completely damaged and he was punctured in his left shoulder by highly pressurized water from one of Naruto's jutsu, which he was sure that he got it as a gift from Nadame Hokage before he passed on from his Edo Tensai form impure world resurrection. He also sported some chakra burns from his opponent's pure chakra based attacks. I can't go down, not after reaching this far. We are now so close to peace, I can see it. Naruto gave a grin with so much confidence that it could have moved mountains. Although even he wasn't faring any better, his orange jacket was ruined and he also had a puncture through his left shoulder from one of Sasuke's Chidori. 1000 birds and also sported second-degree burns from Sasuke's various fire jutsus. This is the end Naruto. Sasuke bellowed with uncontrollable rage and started to concentrate on creating an Enten, Kiyatsuchi, Inferno-style, flame control, in his hands. Naruto saw black fire coalescing around Sasuke's right hand and it was generating an incredible amount of heat. A bead of sweat rolled down his forehead. Kurama. Are you ready? Naruto asked his lifelong friend. Damn right I am. Go for it Kit. Kurama retorted back with a massive grin. Naruto returned his enthusiasm by creating a Rasen Shuriken in his left hand and he made his attack bigger and deadlier by mixing it with Kurama's chakra. Sasuke. Naruto. They charged at each other with their massive attacks and the whole world was blinded by bright light when these two titans collided for their final and the last time. Naruto had been rendered unconscious because of the aftershocks of the last attack, but he woke up after some time and his entire being was aching. He felt like he himself was a massive bruise and at present there was nothing in this world which could increase his pain but he was wrong about that. The second he saw Sasuke's condition, a gasp came out of his mouth. His entire right hand and some part of his internal organs were totally annihilated by his last jutsu. He was bleeding from his mouth and severed right limb uncontrollably. In other words he was in a worse place than Naruto. 
Naruto barely had any strength to run towards him and help, so instead he decided to crawl toward his brother. After a minute of tiresome work he finally reached Sasuke. Just hold on Sasuke, Sakura will arrive any minute and she will heal you. Naruto wheezed out. After hearing that Sasuke stared chuckling ha dot dot ha dot dot ha broken bar ha had dot dot come on Naruto you and I both know a broken bar dot I am already a dead a broken bar dot dot man. Sasuke started to cough because of all the blood in his mouth cough cough anyways this is what I always wanted. Naruto's eyebrows rose when he heard the last statement what? You weary broken bar always like my brother at your broken bar dot dot moving ahead of me. Guiding me broken bar and never breaking our special connection a broken bar dot with each other a broken bar all this time Naruto I envied your strength to broken bar dot dot your drive to do anything for a broken bar dot your precious person and even today was no different. Your strength to broken bar dot dot surpassed mine. You protected me till the end. I should have been a broken bar dot the one guide after all I am older than you a broken bar dot but I will make necessary amends for you and a broken bar our precious peace, which we achieved after spilling so broken bar. Much blood. Naruto was crying openly now, his tears spilled on Sasuke's face. He was holding pressure on the severed limb so that it didn't bleed out. Just stop talking Sasuke. I beg you. Naruto desperately demanded from his passing brother. He didn't want him to die. Kurama was watching a live feed from his cage but he didn't want to interrupt his goodbye speech even though he was in Arkaya. From now onwards Naruto a broken bar Sasuke brought his left hand and poked on Naruto's head and said you are my living legacy. With that Sasuke took his last breath. Nah ooh Naruto screamed about this injustice to heavens. The yin symbol of power was transferred from Sasuke to Naruto. Naruto could feel incredible amount of power within him, he could feel Sasuke's power in him, but before he could even mourn properly, the nine satellites holding the tailed beast started shining brightly and a large wave of chakra hit him like a tsunami and he started to change and his eyes started bleeding. Naruto was in so much pain that he was rendered unconscious. A space-time portal appeared behind Naruto and he fell into it. He was never seen again in the elemental nations. When Naruto finally woke up, he realized that he was in an entirely new dimension with no friends and with no strengths to protect his feeble three-year-old body. Flashback End After relieving his greatest nightmare, Naruto had some stray tears on his cheeks but after ten years of isolation, Naruto had finally understood why Sasuke chose to give him his powers in the end. You wanted to keep your younger brother safe, didn't you? Naruto voiced himself. He closed his eyes and whispered with a smile thank you for everything, Sasuke. Then Naruto opened his eyes but instead of having his original bright blue eyes these eyes were crimson in color and had three tomes circling over a central pupil. These eyes were the legendary jutsu known as the Sharingan, the copy we lie. Few hours earlier broken bar. Serge was unnaturally serious for the first time in his life, and he had every reason to be serious since they were going to infiltrate the Vatican City. The main base for the soldiers of God, aka angels. He was sitting in a chair while all the rest of the devils including the Rai as his peerage and Phoenix household matrons were sitting in a circle around the Satan King, and were staring at the map of the Vatican City. Serge pointed at the outer boundaries of the Vatican City and said Vatican City is a fortress, with high security, but even after all the security against devils it's not impenetrable. Everyone were listening to him attentively. The first line of protection which we have to overcome is the walls which surround the entirety of the Vatican City, hence the name Fortress for the Holy City. Our sources say that Naruto's base is just below the Sistine Chapel. Serge asserted the word Sistine Chapel. This time everybody who knew about the Sistine Chapel raised their eyebrows which included Rai as, Akano and Asia Argento. This is crazy Nissan. Sistine Chapel is the residence of the Pope it's always protected by a legion of angels, and hence it can't be breached at a broken bar. Serge raised his right hand to stop his sister's rent and it had an immediate effect. 
If it was any other day then it would have been true, but the Vatican City is going under a process called Papal Conclave. Sai was getting frustrated by the minute. He hated this tense atmosphere and he didn't even understood anything which Rai as his brother was spouting. What is Papa Kona broken bar gave? Everybody sweat dropped. You really need some help. Thought Rai as but then she decided to answer his question. Papal conclave is the process by which a new pope is selected, when the previous ones die or resigns from their position of broken bar. Ooh that's the only thing which Sai could say since general knowledge wasn't his forte. According to the rules, during this time the chapel could only be attended by Christian cardinals, who were responsible for the selection of the new bishop of Rome aka the Pope. So we won't be able to get through the second line of defense, but how are we going to get through the walls, which will surely be made out of condensed holy energy, and we will also be not able to use our demonic energy, since they will surely sense it. Akano pointed the problems out with an inquisitive expression. Grayfia gave a small smile and said that's very perspective of you. We have already made preparations to overcome that problem. We have borrowed a device from Ejikusan by which we will be able to hide your energy signature and he also has a contact inside the Vatican City, who will help you to teleport inside the Vatican City without any problems, concluded Serge with a genuine smile. We can't let a big group of devils to infiltrate the holy city, the group should be highly talented and small at the same time. Lord Phoenix addressed his concerns for the first time. Serge started to rub his chin and said you are right, that is why it will only be a group of five, which will include my sister, A. Kano San, and the Sekai Uriate then my pawn Beowulf San and Queen Grafia San. I am glad that you are being generous enough to join your peerage in this mission, I am really thankful. Lord Phoenix gave a genuine smile. Serge just took out some bracelets and gave it to Rai as, A. Kano, Izzy and Grayfia these bracelets will conceal your energy, wear it right now. All of them followed his instructions immediately. All of you should proceed to Vatican City immediately, since Papal Conclave has already started. Beowulf will join you later. Your mission is to retrieve Naruto Phoenix alive by any means possible. This is my chance to get rid of Riser for once and for all. Rias thought with a determined face. All the members of the mission walked to Greyfire and a teleportation circuit arrived below their feet and they disappeared from the room of Ocultra Search Club. Below Sistine Chapel Broken Bar. Naruto was already done with his training. Now he was just sitting in the lotus position to meditate and control his vast amount of chakra and magic. His chakra was unlimited but his magic still needed a lot of work even though he had very high reserves somewhere around low level Satan King like Seraph Leviathan, it would still take some time before he would reach the level of Serge Lucifer. In the past decade his biggest achievement was in the field of chakra, after receiving the Yin element from Sasuke. His chakra control was easily around the level of Heigaramu or even Kaguya herself. The biggest benefit of having both the Yin and Yang release were the easier access to bloodlines of elemental nations and it also made mastering those elements faster. His peerage was also incredibly helpful for his training without them he wouldn't have achieved so much in just a span of 10 years. He was trying to understand magic, but he still needed some professional help in this field. He also needed to contact his peerage as soon as he was out of Vatican City, they had just completed their missions and he also wanted to introduce his queen to the rest of his peerage, since she was new on the team. While he was still pondering about his new duties, he suddenly felt someone intruding his base. My base has been infiltrated by some devils. Naruto mused but then he gave a massive shit-eating grin. This is getting rather fun and I also wanted to try some new techniques. He knew that within minutes they would be here, so he wore his white long-sleeved shirt with a symbol of Phoenix Clan on his back. His shirt was open to show a large amount of his chiseled chest. He also wore a blue cloth over his black pant which was then tied to blue rope-like belt and put his sword of Kusanagi attached to his back using the very same rope. He also wore his black and blue style boots. 
In other words he donned the exact same look of his brother and he also wanted to look presentable when his guests came to greet him. Therefore there was not a way in hell he was wearing orange. They are already here. Thought Naruto. As soon as the thought came to his mind, the wall in front of his training room blasted and a man in his mid-twenties with brown hair presented himself. He was little too bulky. Naruto knew that he was Beowulf from Lucifer's peerage. This is going to be a lot of fun. What can he say? He was really bored. A few minutes earlier a broken bar. The group of devils had met with Beowulf who was already there in Vatican. As soon as the introductions were done, they decided to head for Sistine Chapel. Things were going great until they entered the base of this mysterious boy known as Naruto Phoenix. The base was a fucking maze. It was difficult to maintain a sense of direction. It was only because of Greyfire's amazing sensing ability that they were able to maintain their course. It was absolutely necessary that they were out of this hellhole before an hour, because as soon as Papal Conclave was over this chapel would be flooded by angels. I found him, we have to be cautious because there is every possibility that he has already sensed us. Greyfire mentioned with a stern tone making the others in the group flinch. He shouldn't be much trouble, he is the same age as Bukasan, I am pretty sure that all of us can take us. Izzy I suggested with a grin. Greyfire's eyes narrowed and she gave a scathing glare to say we know nothing about him, it's best to not underestimate him. Understood. She is scary. Sai nodded his head as fast as he can. Ryaz and Akano heard the conversation and couldn't help but feel pity for the poor guy, whereas Beowulf just snickered. Greyfire was in an absolute bad mood, the reason was not so but it was the runaway son of the Phoenix family. She sensed his magical power and it was humongous, it possibly matched or surpassed hers. This is just not possible, he is just a boy he shouldn't have such scary magical power. Greyfire now donned a big frown. Beowulf saw Greyfire frown and he thought what is the big deal Greyfire? A phoenix shouldn't make you worry this much. He is right behind that wall. She pointed the wall to Beowulf. Beowulf gave a massive grin and charged his right hand with demonic energy and charged at the wall. Hole in the wall. The entire wall came crashing down. Ryaz, Akano and rest of the group followed the brown-haired man. Beowulf San has insane strength and he is not even a rook. Sai so whimpered after watching the crazy demonstration. As soon as Ryaz, Akano and Greyfire saw the person standing in front of them they sported a massive blush. After 10 years Naruto had become incredibly handsome, his hair was messy and had two bangs of hair reaching his narrow jaw but at the same time it suited him amazingly. His body was well muscled and looked as if it was made by marble, and also had well defined six pack ABS. He didn't even hide those sexy ABS. His bright blue eyes watched everyone with such intensity that it made Rai as, Akano and even Greyfire to be conscious of their looks. By all that's holy, how can there exist such a specimen of a man? Were the common thoughts of Rias and Akano. I don't have the luxury for those kinds of thoughts at least not now. With that she controlled her instincts and this clearly showed her experience as a fighter. Sai managed to watch the small moment between the woman and Seethe as one of those handsome boys. And started crying anime tears. Naruto stared at all the occupants in his training room and was not giving any kind of emotions. This in turn made everyone nervous. Then suddenly Naruto vanished from his position and hit Beowulf so hard that he went flying backwards. He is so fast. The thoughts of all the group members were the same. Greyfire was the only one who reacted on time and sent a low device crystals at Naruto but it was for naught. He again vanished at incredible speed and was just a blur to Greyfire. Beowulf had just managed to recover from that strong hit but before he could go to help Greyfire, the monster of a phoenix appeared in front of him and he unsheathed his sword and stabbed him in the shoulder. How Beowulf just gritted his teeth. I am number broken bar. It must be a holy sword. Beowulf thought alarmingly. Naruto sheathed his sword in the scabbard and then looked towards other devils. Beowulf grabbed his wound and started panting. Greyfire was giving a scathing glare to Naruto. Rai as had already coated her hands with the power of destruction, 
and Akano started to chant a lightning spell whereas Sai was scared as shit. This guy is crazy strong. Sai had a batshit scared face on his face. Before Ryas and Akano could get their spell ready, Naruto appeared in between them and kicked in Akano's face and then he took a turn in the air and jammed his knees in Ryas's gut. Naruto unsheathed his sword to give a final blow but he wasn't allowed that courtesy because of a giant ice spear which came at high velocity with every intention to pierce his heart. However he caught the spear and destroyed the spear with his bare hand. Akano was unconscious in a corner although Ryas was conscious she was bleeding from her mouth and was banting slash recovering from the punishment. I am going to kill you, for doing this to Buku. Sai growled. Boosted gear. Sai finally activated his boosted gear. Naruto just raised his left eyebrow and then he gave a dark aura from his eyes. He is annoying. Thought Naruto. Beowulf was still panting and was also paralyzed by the sword of Kusanagi. This kid is a monster in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Thought a worried Beowulf. This mission was a simple retrieval even though the target was to be retrieved from Vatican City. He never expected to get his ass kicked so soundly. He was powerless for the next precious few minutes. Grayfire was just watching the fight right now, and wanted to see how the Sakai Uri Ute performed against Naruto. She knew that the whole battle could be avoided if the misunderstanding was cleared, but the second she read Naruto's magical power she knew that now it was necessary to ascertain the limit of his power. Since, he might very well be a threat. Naruto stared at Sai with the same dark stare you will kill me? Naruto mocked. This boy was full of openings in his stance and he was going to kill him. Was he serious? Naruto disappeared from his position and appeared right in front of Sai and took hold of his shoulder. I didn't even saw him. Thought Sai. Even though Naruto was holding Sai's shoulder, he wasn't even looking at him instead his eyes were focused on Grey Faya. All this time you were alive on my whim, now I will take your life at my whim. Said Naruto without any emotions and he unsheathed his sword from his scabbard. Raya's eye widened when he heard her supposed future husband say that, she ran towards Sai with all her strength. I am not going to make it on time. Thought a scared and panicked Raya's. She didn't want to lose her pawn and friend. Sai couldn't do anything, he flinched because of the fear to die. Naruto was about to stab Sai when suddenly Grayfire appeared on right side of Sai and took a hold of Naruto's wrist hence preventing Sai from getting stabbed. Naruto was a little surprised to see her move that fast, she didn't seem like a speed-oriented devil. Grayfire never used that kind of speed, since it put a heavy strain on her body and she was not a knight but a queen with large magic reserves. She couldn't use her magic in such an enclosed space. Ryaz thanked heavens for the timely interference of her sister-in-law. That's enough Naruto Phoenix san we are not here to fight instead we are here to take you back home, to your parents. Informed Greyfile with a cool mind. Naruto's eyes narrowed and he said you should have said so sooner, then this fight could have been avoided. I am sorry. She said with same cool tone and released his wrist. Let's get out of here before the papal conclave ends. Greyfire commanded with a stern tone. Beowulf had finally managed to get rid of his paralysis and then he went to fetch Akano who was still unconscious. Ryaz was glaring at Naruto's back with so much hate that he would have vaporized if a glare could be lethal whereas Sai was so scared that he was sure that he will be getting nightmares about today's day for a week. Finally, everybody grouped in front of the teleportation circle which Greyfire created and vanished from the Vatican City. The retrieval mission of Naruto Phoenix was a success. Thank you for watching.